all pants are not the same. Learn about contemporary options today on Fit to Stitch. Fit to Stitch is made possible in part by Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years with innovations in sewing, embroidery, and quilting. Learn more at HusqvarnaViking.com. American and Eford, innovators of thread for all your sewing needs, makers of Intressa sewing thread. Learn more at SilhouettePatterns.com. Elliott Berman Textiles, manufacturer of fashion fabrics. ElliottBermanTextiles.com Welcome. I'm your host, Peggy Sagers, and last season we talked about an analogy that I had made about sewing. I want to talk about that analogy again because I think it's so important for sewers to understand that this is not all about the sewing machine. So let's, let's review. The analogy is we have an architect, and what an architect does is he comes up with these great designs and puts them all together, and we're going to liken that architect to our designer. And then we have an engineer, and an engineer takes the plans of the architect and maps them all out and creates this great little plan, and that plan the builder follows. And the builder is actually the one who puts those plans together. Our architect is our pattern maker, and our builder is our seamstress. So sometimes when we say we sew, we don't necessarily design well, or we don't necessarily know anything about patterns. And so because they're three separate categories, we need more information about each of those. So that's what's gonna lead us into today because we're gonna talk about contemporary pants. And even though we know about pants and we have learned a little bit about fitting, what we can understand about today's contemporary pants, if we look at these that we've got on the table, is that our pant is a little lower in the waist, especially our high-end pants. We'll notice that they're lower in the waist and they've got a wider waistband and that waistband is not a straight line, it's what we called a contoured waistband, meaning shaped. Um, and so it means that it actually fits better and because the pant is lower on our body, it actually looks better. For women who are shorter, it gives us a little more height. For women who are heavier, it makes us look a little thinner and who doesn't want to look taller and thinner, I think that would be all of us. So we're gonna look at pants that have a lowered waistline and a little wider waistband. So let's first off just understand the whole concept of the pant and how it's going to work in this particular case. If I have a pant that's already comes to my waist and I love the way it fits and I have a pattern and I love it, I'm, I can take that pant and I can turn it into a contoured waistband. So let's do that first. I'm gonna move this tissue away from underneath just so there's no confusion here. And I'm gonna take this pant and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna just close up the darts. The reason I'm closing up those darts is simply because as I make my yoke, and you know, I, I've, I've Googled many times what's the difference between a yoke and a contoured waistband, and really there's technically not a lot of difference. A yoke is just a section. But one thing a yoke doesn't have, generally across the board, is a yoke doesn't have darts in it, neither does a contoured waistband. So the whole goal in creating this is to create a pattern piece that doesn't have darting in it. So when I do this and when I close up these darts, my pattern's going to take shape, and that's temporarily and that's just okay. Because the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna decide how wide I want my contoured or waistband to be. And in this particular case, I'm gonna make this two inches. Inch and a half, two inches. Some are really, really wide, but I'm gonna say, unless you're just young and young and young, a narrower looks a little bit better. But two inches is good. Two inches is a nice width. So I've marked two inches there. Just go ahead and lay the French curve on there. It's hard to do when it's, when it's closed. I'll turn this to the side so you can kind of see it a little bit and just play dot to dot. Just literally manipulate that French curve until I can pick up all of those markings. All right, once I do that, I'm gonna take 
and cut right on those marked lines. Anytime I cut a pattern apart, I'm gonna have to add seam allowance on both sides in order to sew it back together without minusing out what I need to have to keep that at two inches. So that actually becomes my contoured waistband. And this, I open back up, and it's why on some pants you see just a little bit of dart remaining. And that's because the width of the waistband wasn't as wide as the darts are long. So there's a little bit of dart that's gonna show at the bottom of the waistband, and that's okay. Now, if I do it this way, what I recognize is I didn't change fit, the shape of the hip, the shape of the waist, all of that works and works together. If you decide, you know what, I, I just don't wanna do that, I wanna just go out and buy a pattern, you can do that also. This is what my pattern's going to look like, and you'll notice that as I push this down, here's my darts, here's the telltale end of my darts, and here's my waistband, and this particular waistband, I can measure it has my seam allowance, but that waistband is about two inches wide. So it doesn't matter which way I start, I just wanted you to see this so you could understand where the contoured waistband comes from. What I want you to mostly to understand is it actually comes from the shape of you, and so, um, the fitting is important that you follow the French curve along that side seam. Okay, so now let's go to the pant and recognize because the waistband comes off the top of the pant, if I'm going to fit this, I've got to put it together in order to fit it. So that's what we're going to do now. And when I put it together, I'd have to put it together just like I was sewing it. So that means I've got to close the darts up as they would be sewn and then I'm going to go ahead and sew this waistband onto the top of the pant, or as it would kind of be to the top of the pant, and line those pieces up. I'm overlapping the seam allowance here at 3 8 and there's my pant. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because if we look at the back of the pattern, the pattern has numbers, and obviously it has the numbers of our waist and our hip, and that's how we choose our size. And what we're going to do is we're going to choose the size that's closest to our body measurements. Now we've already done this, we're gonna have Jeannie out here in just a little bit, but we've chose her waist, her hip, and when you choose a pant, you really wanna choose a pant by the hip size. The reason we do that is if you choose it by the waist, sometimes the legs will just be too large, and generally when I choose it by the hip size, my leg size will follow right along. It'll be right in sync. Most of us, um, we put on weight in the tummy, but those legs kinda stay skinny. So we want to choose it by the hip size and we can always make the waist larger. So in this case, with Jeannie, that was the case. Tummy is a little larger than her hips. And so we put the patterns together. We laid the French curve on the pant tissue. We slid it up and down until it actually matched the size 16. The size 16 is the size she chose that worked for her. She went by her body, she went by other pants she had measured kind of bring all that information together to choose the size, the circumference that works best for you. All right, so once she did that and we chose the size 16, now I'm gonna play with this French curve just a little bit because this curve is really important in understanding who we are and what we are. If I have this curve the opposite direction, notice that it will not follow my line all the way up. I actually lose a little bit of shape right in here, notice the difference. So that's when, even if I slide up or down, it still doesn't. If you notice the French curve is more rounded at the upper end, I wanna use that end. Even though it says on the curve, hip curves one through 17, actually any part of this French curve that follows this hip line is good. And what I wanna use is the lines that are closest to me. Okay, easy enough? Perfect. All right, so let's go ahead and bring out Jeannie because what we've done is we've made this pant up. Now again, I'm gonna repeat that when you're doing a contemporary pant and the waistline is lower than your waist, your natural waist, you're, you've gotta add on the contoured band to do the fitting. You can't do a fitting without the contoured band and not have that included. So go ahead and sew it all together. All right, so a couple things we've done here, Jeannie, um, we've done this before. And so Jeannie knows kind of a little bit about what she wants. We have a one inch seam allowance on all of our seams. So the pattern already had a three eighths inch seam allowance. She added five eighths additional to give a total of a one inch seam allowance. 
So you've got to know where your stitch line is. It's really important to know that at all times, but you've also got to know how much seam allowance you have when you go to pin them away so you don't change that stitch line. So in the front, we pinned one inch all the way up. I'm going to continue it. And whenever you are doing a muslin, I would strongly recommend that you just put a little marking where center front is, which is what she's done here. She's got that little marking here. And when she pins it or when I pin it or whoever pins it, you want to make sure that you're pinning right on that center front mark so that you're not altering the size. I don't want to change the pant um, at center front. Don't want to change the pant at center front. I want to use the angles of the side in order to change that. Okay, so we're going to look now and we're going to drape Jeannie. And we're going to use three terms and I'll refresh them after I drape. I'll go back to the table and refresh them. But they're called length. And so the first one of length is literally where her pants sits at her crotch. So you have to say, Jeannie, is that good? Does it feel okay? Does it need to come up? Does it need to come down? Um, it feels okay. Okay, so she's okay with where it is. If not, in this particular pant, you wouldn't just take off the waist. You would make a horizontal... Okay, that feels better. Alter okay, she's saying that feels better. So we're going to make a little horizontal alteration all the way around the pant because I'm not dealing with the waist, I'm actually dealing with the crotch at this point. So the whole thing is gonna come up and this looks like it's like about a little half inch done twice. I'm gonna do the whole thing half inch. So I'm gonna turn Jeannie around and I wanna continue it all the way because again, this is a length issue and whenever we have a length issue, that means it's all the way around, front, back, et cetera. Okay, so remember, a lot of people say to me, we can't do this by yourself. Yes, you can. I don't know where her crotch is. She's the one who knows where her crotch is. So there's no way I can tell her where her crotch is. Um, I'm simply doing what she tells me to do or how she feels the pant is reacting to her. If you had to, you could pick this up, the amount of, you guess that it's too long. You could take it off, sew that horizontal all the way around. In fact, your sewing might be a little more accurate than me actually pinning, because some of these I might not get exactly right. But you could take it off, take the little tuck up, and then just put them back on, and then go on to the next part. And that would be easy enough if you were just all by yourself and doing this there. Okay. All right, so Jeannie feels like that better? Yes. Okay, feels better. And sometimes if you're not sure, go ahead and pull the pant up and then say, is that better? And then let it back down. So sometimes you don't know until you pull it up. And then once you pull it up, you kind of know that it's good. Okay, now what we did do is that's length. Length can only go up or down. And when length goes up or down, it goes up and down the same amount all the way around, or it doesn't qualify to be length. Okay, then we've got circumference and circumference literally, when she put these on, she found that the circumference was a little bit too big. So that just means what we had measured versus what she had picked out was a little bit of difference. Don't beat yourself up over this. Just simply take it in, take it in on both sides and take it in equally on both sides because I'm only gonna use half of the pant and I wanna make sure that it duplicates both sides. We have talked though now and she feels like her leg is a little bit bigger than what she likes it. So I'm gonna take that in and when you take that in, it's not going to be much. Take it in off the side. Don't, you don't need to go to the inseam. Just merely pull it up just like I did. You want to make sure you don't get these angular wrinkles, which I just got. So I'm going to actually release that a little bit. Um, in a knit, you can go smaller. If you're doing a knit muslin, if you're doing a knit pant, you should do a knit muslin. Don't do a woven muslin and then go in. And I understand a muslin is just kind of a trial run, but don't do a woven muslin and then take it to knit because you're going to get a variance just a heads up okay so I took that in just a little bit I still have straight angle lines and just bring this up whatever amount you're taking it in back into nothing at the tummy the tummy it looks good does it feel good does yes. it feel like it's going to fall down or anything nope. okay so then we're going to go to the back side of her because what we realize on the back side is that we've got a lot of times these funky angles that we don't like or baggy rear ends or, you know, and this pattern is minimal to be quite honest, but we can make it better. And that is called depth. And anytime I'm making a dart, a dart is depth, depth is darting, it goes synonymous. So what I'm gonna do is because I've got a little bit of experience at this, I know it's at the hip line. So automatically when I have wrinkles down here, don't go through a process of, oh, what should I do? Just simply take a dart at the hip line, 
and take it away. Shorten the crotch length of the pant. The crotch length is equal to the depth of the body. In other words, her rear end is not big enough and it's not taking up enough of the fabric. And what this alteration does is it tapers to nothing at the side. You only have to do one side. And again, if you're doing this by yourself, then what you can do is just reach back, pinch this up, like look sideways in a mirror, pinch this up until you see that the pant, the back of the pant hangs straight. And then once it does that, just put one pin there, take it off and taper to nothing at the side. Just make the stitch on the sewing machine and then go ahead and put the pant back on. So when we look at these two alterations here, what we see is this one was shortening the whole pant. The crotch depth was being shortened and this one affects crotch length. They're important that they have to be where they are because they're each playing separate roles. Don't try to build them into the same thing. It's easier to just leave them by themselves and you see she has this beautiful leg now. Okay, I look at the waist, the waist looks really good. Sometimes if you have a gappy waist, you could take a dart at the top of the waistband. Because if you take, and I'm going to, I'm just gonna snug that in just a little bit more. Because if you snug this in, then I'll show you how to convert that into the contoured waistband without actually having a dart in the band. Just because we have a dart here doesn't mean we actually have to have a dart in the finished pant. So I might as well snug that in to where it's comfortable for her and mainly do this in the back if it's gapping because our back is concave and so this is the best place to kind of bring the pant right into our body. Again, don't do it at center back. Center back is off grain and I don't want to intensify that. The whole reason why I have darts um, staggered periodically around the top of the waist is so that I can keep the appearance that the pant is straight. The whole top of the pant is off grain anyway. We'll talk about that in a minute, but I think that pant looks great. We're gonna let Jeannie take that off and then we'll look at it and compare it on the table. All right, thanks Jeannie. Okay, so let's go to the table and just kind of review a few things we did. We put this together, we made some shaping. We still change these, but what I do want you to see is I, I wanna make a comparison Sometimes I think it's hard on the pattern to really understand because the pattern is flat. Now let's look at this little analogy and see if we get this a little bit more. There's three things we're dealing with. The length is up and down. So if on the ruler this is my waist and this is my crotch, I really get that it either goes up or goes down. The first alteration we made, we literally raised this up. The second is circumference. I don't think anybody has a problem with that at all. The third one is depth. And I'm gonna use this tape measure as an analogy, because a pattern actually has three dimensions and we have all three dimensions present, but sometimes when we're looking at a tape measure, it, it, or a pattern, it looks flat and we don't really get where that dimension comes from. So here's our dimension. This is our crotch length. And what we can do is we can actually change this, which is what I did when I did a dart, without affecting the crotch depth. I could change the crotch depth by going up or down without affecting this. It still stays the same. It merely is dimensional. And so again, sometimes because we don't see it as dimension, we don't get these different workings. So the goal in any time I'm doing alterations to pants is to have these three functions literally be separated so that when I make one change, it doesn't kind of domino into the other things. So if I'm doing crotch length, which is up and down, I'm sorry, it's crutch depth. When I'm doing crutch depth, which is up and down, this can just go up and down. I can do whatever I want. When I'm doing crutch length, which is the depth of the body, I can go ahead and take that out and then I get that difference. So once you clearly get the, the three dimension concept, it becomes really simple to do. And let's just review the changes on these pants. Okay. So I'm going to look at these pants versus this tissue so that we can go through. You really have two options once you've draped your pants. I could just go ahead and sew these changes in. I don't have to change them back to the tissue. And personally, I would recommend that you do make the changes to this 
to this muslin. And the reason I would is I would make the changes and then I would try them back on just to kind of test, did you make the changes and did you sew the changes like they should? Anytime I go to change them back to a tissue, I'm more likely to make an error. Possibly, I know sewers never, we don't ever make errors, do we? But you know, you just might never know. Okay, so this amount, I can measure how much that is, and then I can just make a tuck all the way through the pattern, okay? I can then take this curve and figure out where this amount went in. I can take my curve and relate it back to that amount. Notice I didn't change anything here. I changed it a little bit and it actually looks like on this case that I came into the size 14. That's helpful down the road. Pay attention to what numbers I use so that as I lay it down on other numbers, I can actually use it and it's really helpful to know that. In the back, if you notice, I took a little dart here. That's really helpful in taking the dart here. I'm gonna measure how much it is, how far down it is, and I can go ahead and do it right there into my tissue. Notice it tapers to nothing at the side seam. On the waistband, dart, again measure where it is, how big it is, and right here on my waistband, look at that. I can take it out. Notice when I take it out to nothing there, my pattern still lays flat and I don't physically have to have a dart at all because it's ending on the side seam. All right, so there's a couple more things I wanna show you about pants and I wanna show you on the sewing machine. So let's go to the sewing machine. And again, contemporary pants, 99% of them, believe it or not, they're all stitched by, the hem is stitched by machine. They're not hand done. I see so many times where women try to kind of really work perfection and do this beautiful hem where they're done by machine. And the positive of doing them by machine is they have better weight to them. They really hang better, they look better. So if we can come up to the current stage, just do them by machine. Do about an inch hem. I've surged the bottom, my wonderful serger. We all, I think it's hard to live without one. Um, but just go ahead and put that underneath the machine and just, I can stitch right there and go all the way around. Easy enough to do when I get back to the beginning, all I have to do is over stitched where I've currently stitched. And I, I, I know I probably don't need to say this, but I'm going to. Make sure that you match your, that's really important, is that you match your thread to the color fabric and don't ever go lighter than the fabric you all always want to go a little bit darker i wanted to do this just so you can see it but it really looks nice and it really lays nice another thing i want to show you about pants is all about the waistbands not with a contoured when you're doing a contoured waistband you have a seam and it has a facing and it just drops back inside however if i'm actually doing a physical waistband a jean, a pant that goes to the waist, or just a straight waistband, I'm gonna suggest a couple things. Always use the selvage. If I use the selvage, um, the selvage is gonna be on the inside of the pant, if you notice here, and I don't have to finish that edge. I don't have to use a seam binding. I don't have to do anything. I simply have that edge right there, and I'm good to go. So I'm going to cut the waistband out of the selvage, and I make a long straight, I sew the end, and then I fold that and tuck it to the inside. Then I'm gonna do just a little bit of manipulating with this through pressing. I'm gonna actually press the seam allowance up and I'm actually press it up on both sides because I need my zipper to kind of clear up there. But notice then after it goes for a while, my selvage edge, which is the inside edge, can glay down and my seam allowance is pressed up on the west of the waistband, which brings me to this right here. And then when I put it onto the pant, literally all I'm gonna do is poke the raw edge of the pant up into the waistband, and that's gonna finish off the top of my pant. When I go to sew, and again, you guys, this is not, uh, this is not, you're not to use green thread on black jeans. Well, I guess you could, <laughs> but I would recommend that you not. So I can turn that, and I'm literally, this is called edge stitching. I'm literally edge stitching the waistband onto the pant. Now because the selvage is on the back side and it's actually below where I'm stitching, I don't even need to worry about if I'm catching the back of that pant or not. Then with belt loops, as I go to insert my belt loops, literally they're, they're put in as I sew on the waistband. So I can keep going 
and literally just sew the bottom part of that waistband in. And then I'm going to kind of show you what to do from here. Now that I've got that waistband, the, the belt loop there, I'm going to flip it and I'll stitch over the top there. And then many times this is stitched at the bottom and that, that way what you have is you have the ability to have actually a wider belt if you opt it. And so many reasons, the, the whole reason they do a wider belt loop is so that I have options of belt styles and things like that when I'm going to wear them. We have had a wonderful time learning all about pants. Keep in mind that this little tool is so important. It's so important that once you lay it down on your hip line, that you also keep in mind the numbers on that French curb that match your waist and your hip. And that way, as you go from pant to pant to pant, I can continue to not have to deal with that same issue of does it fit or what's the shape or what do I need to change? And it really will save you a lot of time and a lot of frustration. So keep in mind again, when I lay that down, know the waist, know the hip. Join us next time as we talk all about sleeves here on Fit to Stitch. Visit fittostitch.com for all of the patterns and instructions found on today's show, plus more tutorials, webcasts, and techniques from this season of Fit to Stitch. This is show 201. If you enjoyed today's show and want to learn more about fitting with Peggy Sagers, a DVD set of all 13 episodes of Fit to Stitch Season 200 is available at fittostitch.com for $49.99 plus shipping. Fit to Stitch is made possible in part by Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years with innovations in sewing, embroidery, and quilting. Learn more at HuskvarnaViking.com. American and Eford, innovators of thread for all your sewing needs. Makers of Intressa Sewing Thread. Learn more at SilhouettePatterns.com. Elliott Berman Textiles, manufacturer of fashion fabrics. ElliottBermanTextiles.com.